Hello, everyone. How are all of you? I'm going to give you a lesson today about writing a resume or CV. Now, we're going to wait a few minutes for everyone to get nice and settled for more people to join, but it's a pleasure to see you all again. So everyone tell me in the meantime, how have you been? Where are you from? Where are you tuning in from? Uh, okay. Mr. Silva says, hello, everyone. I'm from Brazil. Greetings to Brazil. I have a lot of students from Brazil, and they're all awesome. I love Brazil, and I can't wait to visit one day. But everyone, go ahead and tell me, where are you all from? Another person from Brazil, Sueli. Hello. And I also see Shafi from Dubai, from Sri Lanka. Mohammed says, greetings from the United Arab Emirates. Thank you so much, Mohammed. It's a pleasure to see you here. I hope you enjoy the live, and we're going to begin in just a few minutes. Now, before we go, I just want to confirm that you guys can see everything. I know that this is small, so you're not going to read it right away, but I'm going to pull it close to you when I start explaining. Can you guys see this? Can you guys see the little picture here? I'm going to show you at the end of the class a nice promo code for you to join Cambly with a very, very good discount. So... I just want to know that everyone can see, everyone can hear me well, and everyone is having a great morning. I see Elena from South Korea, Afaf from Canada, Cecilia from Sri Lanka. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Rafina from Saudi Arabia. Oh, I see a lot of people. Pasun from Pakistan. Um, I see... Pepe from Germany. Awesome. Germany. I have a couple of students from Germany as well. I have some from South Korea. I have some from the Middle East. Hello, Cindy from Mexico, where I am actually currently based. Mexico is a lovely country. I see people from the Netherlands, Nazir. I see Kenjira from Thailand. Noriko from Japan. Nata also from Thailand. A lot of people from Thailand. Erol from Turkey. Uh, Lana from Georgia. Um, hmm, okay, a lot of people joining and saying hi. That is always nice to see. Hello, Karimi. Hey, it's nice to see you from Brazil. It's awesome that you're joining us. And I see Sarah from Saudi Arabia, Kanan from Turkey, uh, Hafsa from Pakistan, Sachin from India. So all over the world, we're getting people. We're getting people from South America mostly from Brazil, a lot of people from the Middle East, a lot of people from Asia. So great. That's great to hear, guys. And I also imagine some of you have already moved to Canada, to Europe, to some other countries, and you're living from there. Kim Jira says, I'm so interested in this topic. Well, thank you so much, Kim Jira. We'll start just in one minute. Right before I start, I want to remind you guys that for anyone that does not have time to see the full live, which will last about 30 minutes or 45 minutes, depending on the questions, you can rewatch it on our Cambly YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe, like, and of course, share this video with your friends, with anybody who is writing a resume, who is writing a CV, anybody who's looking for a job. We have a lot of videos to help you guys get that really, really good job when you're looking for that job in English. Okay. Also be sure to follow us on Instagram or all of our social media because we usually share either these kinds of videos, we share clips, we share tips. And of course, like I was saying, at the end of the class, you're going to get a nice promo code for any new students that are joining us. We're going to give um, up to 36% off on your new plan. So be sure to stay tuned. Be sure to uh, listen into the class and wait for that promo code. Okay, so I see mommy from Japan, little queen from Senegal. Thank you, Senegal. I see some African students as well, of course. Um, another person from Saudi Arabia and Sri Lanka. Okay, awesome. Inda from Indonesia. Okay, Kim. And of course, Kim. Uh, nice to meet you, Kim from Korea. Fari Malik is um, from another country as well. Thank you so much. For, for joining us, Malik. Okay, Blackpink says hi, and Vikash says hi. So, hello, you guys. It's And I see Rodrigo from Brazil. Excellent, Rodrigo. It's a pleasure to see you here. So, let's get started. First off, 
you guys can see, resume or CV. Now, the most important question that most people have is, what is a resume or CV? I have an example here, and during our class, I'm going to explain some key differences and similarities between these two documents. Basically, a resume or a CV is just a small document that you write to explain your experience or your value for a new job, why you deserve a good job. But in different countries, there are different styles. And of course, we're focusing on English speaking countries. So many of my students ask me, well, hey, I have an interview coming up. So what can I do? Or I want a job. How can I start to get one? Okay, well, for the first part, you have to get a CV or a resume, depending on what you're looking for. Okay, so guys, we're going to start the lesson. We're going to start the explanation. Remember, my name is Quao. I'm a super tutor on Cambly. You can take classes with me. I'm from New York, and I can't wait to hear all of your questions, all of your feedback, and we'll try to answer as much as we can during the lesson, okay? So let's get started. Now, a resume. What is a resume? The most, most, most important thing about a resume is that it should be concise, okay? A resume should not be long. It should only be about one page long, and I'm gonna put this up here. The most important thing, it has to be concise, okay? Concise. It basically means short, simple, direct to the point, okay? A resume is usually only one page long. That means that in one page, you have to give all the necessary information for any job you're applying. Usually when you see that there is an opening or a new job on the internet, they will require the first thing for you to send a resume. That's the first thing you have to send. And a resume, of course, has different sections, but it's short, okay? And obviously, you can imagine that if a resume is short, a CV is not so short, okay? A CV has more details. I'm going to put that up here. So a CV has details. It usually starts at two or three pages long. Why is that? Okay, well, to begin with, we have to understand why we would choose a CV or why we would choose a resume. Does anybody know why we would send a CV or why we would send a resume? The distinction is kind of simple, but it depends, of course, on the culture and the country. So why do you guys think we might send a CV or why do you guys think we might send a resume? Any takers? Any answers? Does anybody imagine the answer? Okay, so I see, okay, perfect. I see some people already interacting, but not many people know. The simple, simple, simple answer is that a CV usually is used for academic purposes. And like my friend Joy and my friend Doe say, looking for a job is mo mainly for a CV. I mean, for a resume, sorry guys. So that's what we have to keep in mind, okay? A CV is usually for academic purposes, usually. There are some exceptions, of course, but that's the main purpose of a CV, to use it for academic purposes. So for example, if you want an internship with or a research fellowship, or if you're applying for a master's or a doctorate, okay? Maybe in some instances, if you're studying a second college degree or something like that, they might want your CV, okay? So this is for all of my students that are applying for colleges and universities abroad. If you wanna study in the United States, in Canada, in the UK, they will probably request your CV. And your CV, like I was saying, is mainly about your academic life. It has a lot of detail. It's a little bit longer, two or three pages, okay? And your resume, like some people were answering, Joy, Do, thank you for answering. 
it is mainly for a job. Okay. So Fadi also says, uh, Fadi Malik says, it depends on the job. And that is right to a certain degree. Why does it depend on the job? Well, sometimes some jobs that are very scientific or that require research or very high academic experience can also request a CV. Okay. Think of doctors, teachers, something like that. A scientific researcher might request your CV. So like my friend Fadi Malik says, it does depend a little bit on the job. So when you think of CV, think of academic stuff. And when you think of a resume, think of a more general job. Okay. Now, why do we have only one page? Elena says, can I write two pages of my resume? The short answer is not really. You shouldn't. And why is that? So the, re the basic thing is that a resume should be concise because it should only include relevant information for your job. That is to say, it's not about all of your experience. It's only about your relevant experience. Let's think of an example, guys. Does anybody want to tell me where they work or in what profession, right? I know that some of you guys are students. I know that some of you guys are engineers, scientists. I know that one of my students is watching and she's applying for the Navy, right? Or uh, there are lawyers here. She's also a lawyer. So I know that a lot of you have very different jobs. Somebody tell me your job and we can use that as an example. Okay, so... Um, someone says programmer, right? So imagine that you want to become a programmer, right? And you studied two careers in university and you have had two or three jobs. Now, maybe one of your uh, careers in university was programming and one was architecture, right? In your resume, you would include that you studied programming and you would include the jobs that explain your experience in programming. If you had a job working at a law firm, it's probably not relevant. Unless you've had very few jobs, you don't really need to include all of them. Okay, so I see our car says teacher, another teacher, okay. So Janhavi is another teacher. So I see that we have a lot of teachers. So for example, for us, you and I, we are all teachers, right? But if I'm applying to be a teacher at a company, I am probably not going to include information or experience that is not so relevant. For example, I will usually not include something like a hobby. I will probably not include or I won't need to include um, experience as a salesman or as a um, a different area like programming. Unless I am teaching programming, the fact that I have some skills in programming is not necessarily relevant, at least in the experience. Okay, so it's great to hear, guys, that we have a lot of teachers, but that is exactly the reason why experience is the central thing. Okay, and experience is something that we include in both a CV and a resume. Again, I'm going to show you this, guys, up close. Don't worry. I know that this is small. These are just the key points, but I just want to see how a resume... I want to show you guys how a resume looks. I can't really put up a CV because, as you see, a CV has several pages, so it would fill up. I'm going to show you this closer in a moment, but this is just so that you can see the distribution, the design of a CV, of a resume that is just one page, okay? Remember, resume, just one page, and this is more or less how it should look, okay? So, excellent, guys. I see that a lot of you are students. Sarah is a student, um, okay? I see that I s there are some other students like Jasan, okay? I see Muhammad is also a student. So, all of you guys, all of you that are students, which is like half of you maybe, all of you guys, when you're applying for, for university in a master's degree or a PhD abroad, you're not going to write a resume because you don't want a job in that university. You're going to apply with a CV explaining. 
I studied here. These were my grades. This is my experience and so on. Okay. Now, very good. Thank you guys for sharing so much. So you are students. I see a lot of teachers as well. So that would be the reason why sometimes a resume should be very short, one page, and a CV should be a little longer because usually our academic experience is a lot longer. It takes us much more years at the beginning of our life. And in your job, you only really need to share the experience that is relevant to your job. Okay. Now, most importantly, something that they have in common is, well, you might be a great worker, but all of those, all of these documents, both CV and resume have your name and your contact information. Now, I didn't say this at the beginning because of course it might be obvious for some people, but just in case you're not sure, both your CV and your resume should include your name and contact information. You might be the best worker or the best student or the best anything, but if they can't contact you or if they can't call you back, well, it's not really so useful to have a great resume or a great CV. So, excellent. Now, I see also some HR professionals. I see some questions starting to come up. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to answer those in just a few minutes. And as a reminder, guys, like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel because that way we know that you guys like the video. We can keep making videos for you guys for free, of course, and we can keep giving you nice discounts and promo codes. Okay. Remember also to share and follow us on all of our social media like Instagram. And we would love if you could share it with your friends, you know, so that you can watch it again. You can learn together. You can practice these subjects together. So I'm going to answer the questions in a few minutes. Okay. But in the meantime, We'll finish off explaining what the rest of um, the information that you should include is. Now, in a resume, I marked here the experience. Okay, This is the experience section. But you also see that we have another section, which is typically education. And in a resume, education is just a small section. But in a CV, it's a very big section. So these are things that we kind of have in common, right? All of them have to be, have to include the name, the contact information, the experience, and of course, some level of education. This is a something that we have in common, okay? But the amount of information we give varies a lot. In a CV, you should include all of your notable academic achievements, all of your important education. That means that you should include courses, diplomas, any special certificates that you took, any master class. Sometimes people even will include Cambly because it is an excellent way of showing what kind of experience you have in a certain um, language, for example. On Cambly, it might be useful for you guys to see how many minutes you talk, which you can see on your profile, anywhere from 500 to 1,000, 5,000 minutes maybe. That is some information that you can see on your Cambly profile, and that will show, whether it's in a CV or in your resume, how many minutes you've dedicated to really studying English at a very high level with native tutors like me. So... For example, you can include, I took a course in your CV about English, or I constantly improve my English on Cambly, and I have been on Cambly for 5,000 minutes, right? That is something that you can include in your CV or resume. Some relevant, remember, education in your resume, or all of the detailed education that you have taken in your CV, okay? But there is a small section for that in your resume. Now, what else? Well, of course, depending on how much information you need, because in a CV you can give a lot more information, in academic or educational purposes, you can also include publications, teaching, and research experience. Okay, I'm gonna move this just a little bit to make sure that you guys can see. Okay, so teaching and research experience. This, for all of you teachers out there, I know that all of you, or not all of you, I know that many of you are teachers that are watching 
all of you guys can list your teaching or research experience. In a CV, you can, of course, say, I have been an academic professional for 5, 10, 15 years. Of course, if it's in a resume, you would just list teacher from 2005 to 2010, for example. Okay? But it is something relevant, especially in a CV, especially in something that is focused in an academic field. Okay? Any publication, any journal, any paper, any magazine article, anything like that. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be a huge, huge journal of science like science or nature or something like that. No, sometimes it can be even in a smaller academic magazine or paper. Okay, so I noticed that we have some other questions that are accumulating. So we'll just write down a few last little details that we can include. And then we'll explain the formatting, the distribution and the style of a CV or a resume, okay? Now, another thing that we will have in common between a CV and a resume is that they should include all of our skills, relevant skills, of course, and that, like I was saying before, includes languages, okay? So, for example, if you're a teacher or if you're an HR professional like ESSA, I see that ESSA is a uh, HR professional or... Uh, Aliyah is a sport teacher, okay? All of you guys, you can say in your skills, hey, I speak English and Arabic or Chinese or Spanish or any other language that you speak. This means that in your job, you're going to be able to work using different languages. Languages are one of the few skills that are always or almost always relevant both in a resume and in a CV. Because guess what? Learning a language opens countless doors. And remember, guys, if you are not signed up to Cambly, do not disconnect. We're going to give away a very good, very, very uh, big promo code. Uh, and that will allow you to get a very nice discount if you're joining Cambly for the first time. Okay, so stay tuned and be sure to uh, watch out for that promo code. Okay, now, like I was saying, Skills open doors, skill uh, languages open doors, and they are very, very useful, especially for getting a job. And of course, abroad in another country, somewhere like the US, Canada, the UK, of course, you will be expected to speak English, all right? So that is something that you can write down in skills here on your resume, or of course, in a CV, you can write a whole separate section about your skills or your talents including your languages, okay? Now, something else, special accomplishments, okay? Special accomplishments are, of course, not always the most central thing about your working experience. So many times, they're actually not so relevant. We're going to put this uh, a little bit down here. Special accomplishments are not always the central thing to your career, you know? But... If you're a researcher, for example, and you want a prize, let's say a Nobel Prize or a research grant or something like that, that is a very special and very, very, very relevant accomplishment. Okay. So any special accomplishments would probably go on a CV. And unless they're very, very specific, we probably would not include them in a resume. Okay. Remember that a resume should only include something very, very relevant or related to your job, okay? That means if you won a prize for being a salesman and you're applying for a sales position, of course, that will be relevant and that you can include in a small little note here, okay? All of those things are useful to include in your resume, okay? So, Getting on to the formatting and questions. I know that you guys have a lot of questions and we're going to start answering them, okay? For example, uh, Sabtarna says, Sir, how can we write a CV of a seller's boy or delivery boy? I'm a student from India. Well, Sabtarna, uh, sorry, I noticed that you're applying to be a delivery boy or a sales boy and you're a student now. But remember, because you're applying for a job, you're probably not going to write a CV. If you're applying for a job, you should write a resume, 
especially if it's just for being a sales boy or a delivery boy, which is usually something very specific. Okay. If you're applying for a sales position or a delivery position, you will need to include any relevant experience. For example, saying I was a delivery boy from 2019 to 2020. I was also um, an assistant at a store and I sold chocolates from 2019 to 2018. Okay. The so relevant work experience, experience that is related to the job you want. And of course, you can also include skills or any education that is relevant. In skills, for example, I know that in India, many people are required to drive to be delivery boys, either a moped or a, or a motorcycle. And if not, you can just include in your skills that you can ride a bike really well, that you're a responsible driver, that you have never had an accident, for example. Those very, very specific skills, only the ones that are relevant to the job, you can include in your resume. You don't need a CV, okay? And be sure, of course, to not include every skill you have because not all of them are so useful for your job, okay? Um, okay, and I also see, why does the example resume layout not contain a photo? bad practice, isn't it? We're going to start explaining the layout now. And actually, this is a very, very important question. In many English speaking countries, having a photo is not required in a resume or a CV even. In fact, in some places, I believe like London in the, in the UK, in, in Great Britain, in some places, it is actually not allowed to include a photo. Why is that? Well, sometimes whether you're an employer or a worker, your photo can sometimes cause a little bit of a preconceived notion, right? You can imagine how people will be. So you will have an idea of how they are by their looks instead of by their experience. So whether it's for a CV or for a resume, at least in most English speaking countries, it is not something that you have to do. Some people choose to include it, and that's fine. It is, of course, allowed, but you don't have to do it, okay? And like I said, in some places, it's not really allowed for an employer to ask for it for a photo of you. Remember, guys, that in some places, it's totally fine if you have longer hair, if you have tattoos, if you have some piercings, as long as they don't affect your work performance. So if you're a very good programmer and you have an excellent resume or CV, you don't really need to include your photo because they shouldn't be judging your photo. They should just be judging your experience. Okay. At least that's the way it is in most English speaking countries. But of course, like I was saying, it does vary depending on the culture and the country. Okay. <clears throat> so Coco says must have experience to apply job. And that is a good question, Coco. Not always, not all jobs require a high amount of experience, but usually the jobs that don't require experience will also not require either a CV, and sometimes they won't even require a resume. They will sometimes require something that is called a cover letter, a small text saying, hey, my name is this, I want this job. But these can vary a lot, so there's no formal exact format for, for these types of letters. So we don't cover them here, okay? Um, I have experience in gemology. I don't have a certification, Azam says. That is very good. So that is something that you might want to add in skills. You won't add it in your education, maybe, because you don't have an actual certificate, but you can add it amongst your skills, okay? And remember, in a resume, they're not asking for copies all the time of all of your diplomas or certificates. In a CV, here is where you would include all of your diplomas and certificates. So for example, Azam, if you want to work in a jewelry store and for some reason they request a CV, you can include here in your skills that you have experience in gemology, even though you don't have a certificate, right? You're not certified. Of course, as a personal recommendation, there are many courses online or local courses that generally give you at least a diploma or some small certificate. Look for these courses and they can be very useful because that way you can include a certification in your portfolio of, of documents in your CV and resume, right? 
But remember, sometimes, depending on the job, they will not ask for this. Okay? So, it is good to get certified, but of course, it depends on what you want. And again, guys, remember, that's why Cambly is such a great platform, because you can say, I have been speaking with native speakers, learning English for 5,000 minutes, for 1,000 minutes, for any amount of time, and that is a real, real number that a big company like Cambly is giving you that you can put on your resume or CV to prove that you have a better level of English. Okay, now... Uh, Muhammad says, sir, if we have no relevant experience as job demanded, can I write other experience in resume as a good impression? Well, Muhammad, this is also a good question, and I would not really recommend it. It's not to give a good impression necessarily, okay? You can list relevant experience to show that you are responsible, to show that you have been a hard worker, for example, but it's not like lying, you know? It's not only about them thinking that you're a good guy. No, you're actually proving that you have been able to work in maybe another field for a good amount of time or doing so well. In this case, if you have no relevant work experience for a programming job, you might want to include in skills that you're a fast learner, if you're a fast learner, that you have passion for technology, that you have always liked using computers, and that you're, uh, or that you've taken a course in programming. You might not have work experience, but remember, a resume does have some other areas where you can include some level of interest or some, let's say, information or background in this field, like in education and skills, maybe in languages or projects, something like that, okay? Uh, Dr. Hiro Endo. Hi, teacher. How about for a dentist? Well, Endo, this is an excellent question. It depends on what you're applying for. If you're applying for a university, for a teaching position maybe, or for a research position, you're probably going to want a CV because it's for academic purposes. You're going to want to include any research or publications you made as a dentist. And of course, you can include your experience, whether it's work or teaching or, or researching, and any relevant education, which of course brings me to a relevant point. Sometimes something essential that is not requested for all jobs is a professional title. Okay, I left this for the end because it is not something that you necessarily always have to include. Okay, so Hiro actually asks a very good question. If I'm a dentist, well, that has to be my professional title. I'm a teacher. And even though maybe I have been to a dentist a lot, I have to actually have a professional title that says that I have permission by the government or by a region to practice dentistry. If I don't have that permission, some jobs like a lawyer or doctor, a dentist, a healthcare professional, you can't do unless you have this professional title, okay? So depending on the job, depending on what you're looking for, a professional title might be necessary to include, whether it's in a resume or whether it's in your CV. So great question here. I would say that depending on where you want to apply, you might want to do a CV or a resume. Usually for this kind of thing, a resume is enough because if you're a dentist and you've been working for five years as a dentist, you don't really need to include that much different information unless you're really, really interested in showing a lot of prizes, a lot of academic experience. But that, again, is probably only relevant if you're applying to a university or something like that. Okay. Um, okay. So Assad says, sir, for electrical engineer who is going to apply for internship, then what will he write instead of experience? Okay. Very, very, very good, Assad. Because you're applying for an internship, it's not exactly a real job yet. So because you don't really have that much of experience, it doesn't really make sense to write a huge CV. You can write a resume with a short letter that is called a cover letter, what we were talking about. Okay. You can write a short letter saying, hey, my name is Asad Ali. I have been a student and I have a big interest in joining your company as an intern. For the moment, I, uh, I haven't had any previous work experience, but I'm passionate about learning, but I'm really, really um, a fast learner. I'm a hard worker, and I can't wait to join your company. Of course, we would write in a more formal tone, but that's just to give you an idea. 
And in your resume, your experience would be your academic experience, your education. So you would include things like your grades for the past year. You would include any relevant skills. For example, you're good at computers or you're a fast learner or you're very responsible. And then any other relevant skills like languages. Okay. That's what you would include if you're applying for an internship. Okay. Okay. So now uh, just to, to close up, guys, I'm going to explain a little bit about the format. Now, here is where I'm going to pull this a little bit closer to you guys, just so that you can see what it is. Okay. So we have at the top, usually at the top left, we have our name and on the right side, we have our contact information. Okay. Remember, this is absolutely, absolutely necessary. This, of course, is just an example. It's not real information, but this is absolutely necessary that we include because if not, if we don't include any contact information, how are they going to call you? Right. So we always at least need our name and our contact information. Okay. Depending on the job, this may vary. They might only ask for an email and phone number, or they might want your full address. Okay, but this is where you include it at the top. Then you notice here a short, a uh, very small line of text. This is what we would sometimes call a header, right, or uh, or a statement. This will usually have either your professional title, a very um, captivating or a very uh, important aspect of you, like top salesman of the year at Ford right? Or you might want, in my case, for example, if I was writing my resume, because most of my experience has been on Cambly in the past few years, I would write, wow, wow, guerra. And I would write super tutor on Cambly for several years. And I also create content for all of my lovely students. That's what I would write here, right? And then of course, I would explain. It. Now, as you guys can see, this looks like a list. Why does it look like a list? Well, it's very important to note that in a resume, we usually write things in inverse chronological order. What does that mean? It means that we write what happened most recently, and then we go to the past. Okay. That means that if we're thinking about our most recent job, in this case, in my case, I would be in 2021, right? Cambly right here. And I've been working on Cambly for a long time. And before that, maybe 10 years ago, for example, I was working at another company, right? That would be maybe 2016. And I would write the other company and the other title. Okay. That's the way that we would describe it. The most recent first, and then going into the past. And then maybe I had another little job in 2013, for example, right? And I would include that here. That is the, the way, the format that we should give to a resume. In a CV, actually, it's usually the other way around. In a CV, we usually start with our name, professional title, and any relevant information like, I've been a dentist for five years, or I've been a teacher for 10 years, or anything like that a small description of ourselves, and then we would go on to our education, you know, all of our academic experience, all of this. But in this case, it's usually, not always, but usually in chronological order. So you would start with your college, or sometimes some people include their high school if they were very, very high achieving in high school. High school, college, master's degree, post um, doctorate degree, PhD, and then any postdocs or any other extra things that they were doing, okay? So chronological and inverse chronological. This is not a rule. This is not mandatory. For example, if your most recent job was 2021, but you only worked here for maybe six months, for example, and for five years, you had a very, very, very important job and it gave you a lot of experience, and it was very important to you, to your career, or to this position, you can divide your resume in sections, meaning that you can say, my most relevant experience, 
other type of experience, your education and your skills. That is something that you're allowed to do. Okay. So I'll answer a few more questions in a moment. Just to remind you guys in a few minutes, we're almost at that time. We're going to give away a promo code for all of you guys that are new to Cambly, that you want to join us, that you want to learn English. Remember on Cambly, we have literally thousands, thousands of tutors and each of us specializes in different things. You can have tutors that are just going to practice simple conversations with you or that can teach you basic grammar or basic vocabulary. There are other teachers like me, uh, and I have been teaching for a long time. I have teaching certificates. I have a lot of experience, and I focus on more advanced subjects. I focus on advanced phonetics and morphosyntax, basically meaning pronunciation, advanced vocabulary, advanced conversation, and professional skills like this. And all of us, you can find just a click away whenever you log on to Cambly. Okay, so be sure to join if you haven't joined yet. And like I was saying, we're going to give a promo code in just a few minutes. Okay, so guys, that is the very general aspect of a CV and a resume. Remember that sometimes for other things, you might want to include a cover letter if you don't really have that much to say in these documents. Remember that there are some things in common and that there are some differences, of course. Now, uh, something as a small note, like I was saying about the pictures, different places will have a little bit of a different style, but it's always important to speak in a very simple, clear, direct way. These are not places to really tell stories. You're only listing information, okay? So keep it simple, keep it short, and keep it professional. You usually don't want to treat your employer as a friend. You want to maintain a certain level of professionalism, right in a formal tone, right with professional fonts. I see that a lot. Some people try to get creative with their fonts or with their colors. That's not always bad, but be sure that you don't go too much on the creative side. Remember, this is usually for a very professional, very formal and serious type of position. So you don't really need to show visual creativity, right? In most cases. So keep it simple. Usually you don't need to include so many colors. If you want to include one or two colors, one simple bar, one simple ribbon here, that is fine if you really want to, but don't feel forced to, okay? Like I was saying, a resume or a CV is usually not the place that you want to show off that much visual creativity. It's more for showing off other things like your experience, your skills, things like that, okay? So... Guys, now on to the questions. I know that many of you are burning with questions and I already see them appearing here. So any questions that you have, feel free to share them while I talk about the promo code. So the promo code is go live. And with this promo code, if you're just joining Cambly, you're going to be able to get up to 36% off on your plan. We have very long plans, very short plans for many minutes in the week or just a few minutes in the week, depending on what you need or what you can get. And remember, on Cambly, you can connect with thousands of tutors, native speakers from all over the world, whether we're from, I'm from New York, for example, from New York, from LA, from London, from Cape Town, from many countries in the world with different accents, with different experience, with different levels of teaching experience, and of course, with different styles. That is very important. You should always choose a teacher that fits your style. Don't think that an advanced teacher is always the best option. Sometimes the best teacher is someone who goes slowly and at your pace. And when you sign up to Cambly, anytime, anywhere from almost any electronic device, whether it's a phone, a tablet, or a computer, you're going to be able to log on and immediately have a chat with any of us or, of course, if you want to plan it, you can make a reservation at a time of your convenience, and that way we will give you a very structured class if you want it. We have a lot of material on Cambly for test prep, for pronunciation practice, for conversation practice, for all kinds of things, okay? So, guys, if you're not members of Cambly, be sure to sign up now. With this promo code, you're going to get a very nice discount. And for all of those who are already on Cambly, remember, my name is Kua Guerra, and I am a super tutor on Cambly. You're going to be able to see me in the description. Don't worry if you can't really write my name. So, my name is Kua, and you can have a class with me clicking on the link below. Okay, now on to the question, guys. It says, I'm Kay. 
I work mainly as sales and have worked as a translator for 18 months. I'd like to apply for a translation position. How should I constitute my CV? Well, okay. In this case, because you, it seems from what I hear, you didn't really study to be a translator. You don't need a CV. You would probably want to write a resume. Okay. Remember, resumes are short and just for applying for jobs. Usually they're very simple and most importantly, concise. Okay. So in your resume, you might want to add in skills or in some previous work experience that you were working in sales. You were a good salesman, blah, blah, blah. If your education, if you, if you studied in, um, in a formal university, or if you only studied up to high school or something, you can of course include that in your resume. But for your relevant experience, you would say at the top, I have been working as a translator in here for this amount of years. Okay. My skills, of course, include the languages that I can speak, and that's what you would send, okay? You would not send a CV with two or three pages. You would send one simple page as a resume, your name, contact information, your experience working as a translator in the past, for the past 18 months, okay? And then any other type of work experience, if it's really important, okay? And of course, education and skills are relevant to you because that may show how good of a speaker you are in a certain language or how much you're able to write, things like that, okay? So, um, next one. How to write about CV for scholarship? Well, Mukhtar, I was explaining that a few minutes ago. And remember, guys, if you weren't able to see the full live, in a few moments, we're going to end the live and you're going to be able to share it with your friends. You're going to be able to rewatch it. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, like and activate notifications because we do these kinds of things very frequently. So every time we upload a video, you're going to know with your notifications. Okay. So you're going to be able to rewatch the whole video with the explanation of how to write a CV for academic purposes for a scholarship. Okay. And of course, if you like it, share it with your friends and like, okay. Uh, sir, what is the standard size of paper for the resume? Joy, that's an interesting question, Joy. Well, in the West, we could say, at least in North America, we usually use letter. Letter is 8.5 inches by 11 inches. However, in Europe, it's very common to use A letters, okay? Um, when I say A letters, it's because the size of the paper is either A, B, C, or so on. And usually, the type of paper they use is called A4, which is very similar, but not exactly the same. The short answer is you would want to use either letter or A4, depending on the country you're in. If you have a doubt, a quick Google search, what is the most uh, common paper size in this country will solve your problems, okay? But usually letter or A4, usually not any other options. Okay. Um, and I also see, okay, uh, how can I write CV for a professional job like nursing? And I want to know about different types of CV. Well, Mutapali, like I was saying, you can rewatch the video. Short answer is for a nursing job, you might want to add a CV if you have like a master's degree in nursing, if you have a lot of certifications in nursing, but only if that's really, really a lot and very long. If it fits in one page, you don't need a CV. If it fits in one page, you can very well comfortably uh, submit a resume and that's no problem. Okay. So, um, Dr. Hiro. Uh, okay. I want to apply to graduate school. Ah, okay. Well, Hiro, if you want to apply for school, that will usually be not exactly a professional resume or exactly a full CV. It would be like I was saying, a short cover letter explaining your intentions and something like a resume listing any relevant experience in education, for example, um, high school, middle school, um, your grades, something like that. And then of course, all of the awards and achievements that you've gotten. Again, this is not exactly a resume or a CV because it's not for a job. Okay. So in these instances, you might want to keep it short. If it fills up two or three pages, don't worry. Of course, if you're applying for a scholarship, if you're applying to university, the more you show, the better. Okay, obviously in a good way, right? So you would write it 
something like a resume format, but if it gets longer, don't be afraid to write something like a CV as long as it's not too long and including very irrelevant information. But for your case, remember guys, for people who are only entering university at the graduate level and they don't have any experience either in work or in a formal academic life, it's not exactly so necessary. In those instances, it's more important to write letters describing your life and your experience, okay? Sweli says, nice class. It's always amazing to learn more. Thank you. And thank you so much, Sweli, for staying uh, with us and enjoying our class. Remember to share it, guys. Um, I believe there are not many other questions. Uh, yes, for... I already answered about internships, about different positions. So, guys... Because uh, we answered most questions, we're going to stop it here. It was a really fun live. I really enjoyed meeting you guys. And I'm so grateful for all of you who are watching and, of course, sharing, uh, hopefully, a lot with all of your friends and family. Remember, guys, this is a promo code. Go live just like that for any new students who want to join us on Cambly. Remember that you can have classes with me or with many other tutors, and we can all answer your questions specifically. We can all Take classes with you for specific subjects, for anything that you have a specific doubt in, whether it's pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar, listening, whatever you need, you're probably going to be able to find the right tutor for you. You can take classes with me by clicking on the link below. And well, I can't wait to see you guys on the platform and again on the following lives. Okay. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Paolo. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sueli. Thank you, uh, Hiro. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Kule. Thank you for your, your time, for your attention. And I hope to see you on Cambly. Okay, guys? So bye-bye. Take care and hope to see you soon. Take care, guys. Bye to Sri Lanka and Thailand and Brazil and Turkey and all of you guys joining from the UAE, from the United Arab Emirates, or from Saudi Arabia. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nathimi. Uh, thank you, Mukhtar. Thank you, all of you. Okay, so bye-bye, guys. See you on Cambly.